you know, it just never ceases to amaze me how much improvement you can create to your brain doing fasting. But there is a sweet spot. Uh, you're going to have to fast for at least 18 hours. And so you'll have an eating window of six hours and a fasting span of 18 hours to really see some major improvements in your brain. So it's not hard. You just skip breakfast. First meal is at 12. Second meal is at six. Or it could be first meal 11 in the morning, second meal at five, or first meal at one o'clock and the second meal at seven. And that means no snacking during your fasting. You can eat during your eating window, but I would recommend just having two meals. One at lunch, one at dinner. And if that's a problem, if you're still hungry, definitely add more fat at the end of the meal, whether it's a big handful of nuts, pecans, or, or macadamia nuts, or some other types of fat. Now, one of the reasons I'm doing this video is simply because there's so much bad information of what to eat when you get off the fast. If you have any problem with your brain, dementia, uh, ADD, um, seizures, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's. So let's just dive right in here. Now you have ketones, right? The benefits of ketones for your brain. And um, there's other benefits I want to talk about, but ketones in general are very, very therapeutic to your brain. Um, sometimes you'll hear this argument that the brain only is, can live on sugar or glucose and uh, ketosis is dangerous. That is completely, absolutely, positively not true. Your brain prefers ketones. If given the choice between a ketone or a glucose uh, molecule as fuel, the brain will choose the ketones over glucose. There are three ways to make ketones. Uh, you can make ketones by going the ketogenic diet, by reducing your carbs and eating more fat. And so some of the fat you'll eat will be turning into ketones if you keep your carbs low. Another way to produce ketones is just fasting. Now you're not gonna eat anything. So your body will go after your fat reserve and turn your own fat into ketones. The benefit of doing fasting uh, compared to the ketogenic diet is that you're gonna produce a lot more ketones. You'll get deeper into ketosis and you'll have a lot of other additional benefits that extend beyond ketones. You'll have certain genes that will be expressed just merely from the fact of not eating and creating that mild stress on the body, which then compensates and produces all these magical, wonderful things to your brain. Our bodies, our brains have evolved um, from not eating, starvation. Um, so we have all sorts of genes that help us survive when we don't have food. I mean, think about way back before we had the all-you-can-eat buffets. I mean, there are days that we didn't eat. And if there wasn't food available, um, we would die. So what happens is our brain becomes smarter. It becomes more focused. It improves when we don't eat. So then we can find food to eat. And a lot of people will never discover this unless they try fasting. And then they'll find out, wow, I feel so much better your mood, your cognitive function improves, and then they're hooked. So our brains are majorly benefited by ketones, by gene expression from doing fasting. And when you exercise, you will generate ketones as well. And another major benefit of fasting is that you are reducing glucose in the diet. And that alone greatly reduces the destruction, the oxidation of what glucose does to your neurons and your brain, into your nerve cells, not to mention a lot of other tissues. And so the reality is that a lot of people have actual damage to their brains from a high carb diet, from the chronic exposure to glucose, because what glucose does to your neurons is it destroys your neurons. And then your neurons can no longer absorb glucose. So they can't get fuel. And the fact that the person never goes on a ketogenic diet or an or doesn't lower your carbs, starves them even more because if you don't lower your carbs, you're dependent on the glucose, which you can't absorb. And so the cells can't get energy or ATP. So it's really the lack of the fuel that the neurons need that destroy the brain. So when you switch over your fuel source, the neuron finally can get fuel and ketones bypass this damage and feed the neurons directly. Also, the support cells, it's called the glial cells, one specifically being an astrocyte, uh, helps feed the neuron. So if you never do fasting, 
never do the ketogenic diet. Unfortunately, these cells have a very difficult time getting fuel. Thus, all the complications uh, that come with diabetes to the nervous system, to your brain. You have diabetic-induced dementia. You have diabetic neuropathy. That, that's damage to the nerve cells because what happens is all this glucose destroys the, the capillaries, the blood flow to the nerves. And so the first nerves that show a problem are the nerves on the bottom of your feet. That's why you get peripheral neuropathy, like numbness, burning on your feet and then your hands. And then it destroys the capillaries to the eyes, which happen to feed the retina, which is a nerve. It's an extension of the brain. That's the term diabetic retinopathy. And then there's one more thing I want to mention. There's um, a part of the nervous system called the autonomic nervous system. Okay. And when you have diabetes, which is a high sugar situation or condition, um, you could develop something called diabetic autonomic neuropathy. And that's quite interesting because a lot of people don't talk about it, but I'm going to go through the different conditions that this can manifest as, okay? Number one, a high pulse rate, okay? Because the autonomic nervous system controls the, the heart, okay? You can also have exercise intolerance because you can't adapt to it because the autonomic nervous system is all about helping the body adapt to stress and exercise is a stress. You also have another condition called orthostatic hypotension. That's a condition where you stand up and you, you get dizzy or you could even pass out. A severe condition of that is called POTS. And so one of the remedies, at least a temporary remedy is benfotamine, which is a vitamin B1 because B1 greatly improves the complications of diabetes, uh, insulin resistance, and problems with insulin in general. But ultimately, if you have orthostatic hypotension, you need to get off the carbs for sure. And then we have another condition called gastroparesis, which is a condition of, uh, that affects the autonomic nervous system to the point where everything moves very, very slowly through your digestive tract, okay? That comes from destruction of the autonomic nervous system. Another condition would be constipation. Because if the nerves that go to the smooth muscle of your colon are not working, you're not going to be able to digest and everything is going to be very sluggish. Then you have another condition called esophageal dysmotility, which is a fancy term for you, you get regurgitation up into your esophagus from the stomach or heartburn, acid reflux, that type of thing. You can also have chest pain or a feeling that food is stuck in your throat and you might have difficulty swallowing. All those conditions can stem from a problem with your autonomic nervous system because of the way the blood sugars have affected that part of the nervous system. But you don't necessarily have to be a diabetic to have those conditions because you could literally be a pre-diabetic or you could have severe insulin resistance and have some of those symptoms as well. The reason I'm bringing that up because if you have some of those symptoms, you need to change your diet. But let's just kind of go through some of the amazing effects of fasting on your brain. Number one, it slows down the age-related brain decline and brain-related diseases like Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, things like that. So fasting slows down the aging brain and it helps to reverse damage to the brain from these other chronic conditions. Fasting also allows the brain cells to finally get the fuel that it needs if you have damage from a high carbohydrate diet. Fasting reduces inflammation within your brain. Fasting stabilizes your neurons, as in doing the ketogenic diet for seizures, which is a neuron that becomes out of control. So this is why ketones can help stabilize the overexcitation of a neuron. Fasting has certain gene benefits by expressing certain genes that help the nerves connect better. And fasting increases genes that increase the repair action of the neuron. Fasting will also greatly boost um, antioxidants in certain parts of your brain that will help decrease the complications of some chronic inflammation or chronic type of brain problem, whether you have Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, or some type of autoimmune disease of the brain like MS. So if your body makes more antioxidants, it's called endogenous antioxidants, 
you can then reduce the free radical damage that can occur when you have all this inflammation. Fasting will also give you benefits with something called autophagy. So for example, if you have placking of the brain because you have Alzheimer's or you have some type of scar tissue in your brain or some damaged proteins in your brain, when you fast, you go through this autophagy. And autophagy is basically recycling these proteins that are damaged in your brain. So it's making your brain new again. Fasting can also greatly improve um, structures in the brain, like the structure that controls the circadian rhythms uh, that help you sleep. And fasting also greatly improves your mood. It'll bring you up from either a depressed state or a state of anxiety. So fasting will affect your mood and your cognitive function. And I'm talking about your ability to learn, your ability to focus and be productive, your memory, and that includes also spatial memories. So let's say, for example, you just parked your car and you can't quite remember where you parked it. Well, fasting can help you locate yourself in space. Your GPS, for example, is going to be off. So your internal ability to locate and navigate through things, especially when you're driving, um, gets lost. So you basically can improve your navigation, as well as your motor skills, your coordination, your balance. So one of the reasons I'm doing this video is to help put you on the right track, to give you the correct information so you can optimize your, your brain function. Because if you do a search right now for Alzheimer's, okay, what's going to come up on the first page of Google is a diet from Hopkins University, is a diet that WebMD will recommend, which is a diet from the Alzheimer's Association. And these diets are all the same. In fact, the diets are all the same for diabetes, heart disease. It's the same old, same old. And I'm not kidding. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to list some of the things that they recommend for dementia, for heart disease, for diabetes. And I'm not kidding. At least three servings of whole grains every single day. Okay, right there. It's going to create inflammation. And it's also going to increase your blood sugars. You don't want to do grains with these conditions. Number two, beans more than three times a week. Okay, all right, whatever. Beans are high in carbs. That's, that's kind of a minor point. Next one, and this is what Hopkins said. Less than five pastries or sweets per week. I mean, you don't wanna do any sweets, okay? It's, it's bad advice to even allow people to consume pastries or sweets for dementia or heart disease, whatever. Next one, all right, one glass of wine or another alcoholic beverage. Again, why are you even recommending wine or alcohol when someone has this condition? Is there any benefit in pastries or alcohol or whole grains for dementia? And the answer is no. So if you're new to my channel and you want to get on the right diet to optimize your brain health, you need to watch this video right here.